All right. Well, my name is Frances Klingenberger. I am the manager of strategic programs over at the Greater Bakersfield Chamber. And on behalf of the Chamber and BYP, I'd love to welcome you all to our sixth webinar in our BYP virtual summit series. <clears throat> it's really great to see some familiar faces here today. Um, I'm really glad that some of y'all keep coming back and wanting to learn and grow together with us. Uh, for those of you who are new today, the BYP Summit is typically a one-day event uh, where we can all gather together, but obviously because of 2020, we cannot be together physically. Um, so we decided to expand the summit into a series of webinars. Some of our upcoming webinars will include um, financial success, um, diverse, diversity, equity, and inclusion practices, entrepreneurship, and a lot more. So I'm going to turn it over to my coworker, Hillary Haynes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Hillary with the Chamber. So glad that you guys could join us today. Uh, I know I'm certainly excited and have been looking forward to this webinar on getting the best sleep of your life because I have been struggling lately. Uh, so look forward to hearing from Jennifer in a bit. Um, first, I want to thank our sponsors, Strata Credit Union, Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center, and Carney's Business Technology Center for supporting this program so that we are able to offer these free weekly webinars. Um, and then just as far as Zoom etiquette goes today, um, we just want to let you know that this is being recorded so that we can share it later on on the Chamber's YouTube. So if you miss something, if you get, you know, distracted with the Zoom call or a conference call, um, you can and follow back uh, and look at that recording. And then if everyone can stay on mute unless we're um, having a discussion just to kind of uh, reduce any feedback or background noise, but we definitely want this to be an interactive session. So please free, feel free to ask your questions, engage, comment um, with Jennifer. So uh, back to Francis, who will introduce our speaker. Thanks, Hillary. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker today, um, Jennifer Woodward. She is a certified functional diagnostic nutritionist and a board certified wellness coach. Uh, Jennifer works with women all over the world to help them soothe their digestive woes, speed up their metabolisms, stabilize their hormone imbalances. And this year, her free time is well spent homeschooling her four children but when she can sneak out, she loves to play ultimate Frisbee or take her dog Baxter on a walk. So I'm going to turn it over to you, um, Jennifer. <laughs> thanks, Francis. Thank you for that. And thanks for having me back, you guys. I think this is so amazing that um, you're just in the, the business of sharing information with the community. It's really important to have that knowledge because we do know that knowledge is power and knowledge um, can also be sleep, right? And so today we're going to talk about sleep because if you're not sleeping, you guys, the rest of life really sucks, right? <laughs> if you are not sleeping, it is really hard to have a good attitude. It's really hard to be, um, you know, productive and professional at work. And this comes from a, a, like a pain point for me. I have four kids. After I had my third baby, I had this period of nine months of extreme insomnia. It was awful. Like I had panic attacks and anxiety. I couldn't sleep. I, there were entire nights where I wouldn't sleep. So it would be like three or four nights where I just, my body wouldn't shut down enough for me to be able to go to sleep. And I finally realized that was some hormone insufficiency that I just like tanked all of my good hormones. And so that was one of the, the catalysts that really got me into doing what I do now, which is work with with women and families to, to stabilize hormones. Um, and sleep is one of the biggest complaints that I get from my women. So I'm really happy to be sharing these um, top 10 tips that we can use today to balance um, your sleep, right? And it looks like, um, well, we're balancing energy and mood. <laughs> like, that's actually supposed to be sleep. These are your top 10 tips to balance sleep, okay? Let's go through them really fast and we're gonna break it down as we go through each one of these tips and I'll give you a little bit more information on each. And if you have questions, like, like I said, let me know because some of these things will probably be new to you and some of them you'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot, I really need to do that, right? 
So the first tip is balance your blood sugar. I'm going to talk to you about how you do that, but I want you to start thinking about like the little people in your life, a little like, you know, five, three, one years old, you know, if it's your own kids, if it's nieces and nephews, um, you know what it takes to really get them to settle down and candy is not it, right? <laughs> Number two, I want you to get outside early. We're going to talk about your pineal gland and the production of melatonin and cortisol and the important sleep and rest hormones that your body cycles through during the day. Number three, take breaks at 10 and three. Every single one of us on this call, I'm sure is guilty of sitting down and working a full day in front of the computer, not even getting up to eat or possibly pee for hours on time, right? At a time. So I want you guys to start thinking about, you know, really that self-care process of scheduling breaks for yourself the way you schedule for someone else. Number four, carbohydrate load at dinner. Yes, carbohydrates. I'm not gonna tell you to do keto. I'm not gonna tell you to cut out all carbs. I'm actually gonna tell you that your body really needs them to create sleep generating hormones. Number five, be careful with your vices. We'll talk about what those are and what they're not. Um, number six, use digestive enzymes. I don't know if you knew this, but it takes 80% of your body's available energy to break food down. And so you can feel really tired during the day if you're not breaking your food down appropriately. And then your body goes into this like zing, you know, wake cycle in the afternoon and the evening because it's finally got some energy back. We're going to shift that to giving you energy during the day and sleeping well at night. Number seven, use these borrowed tricks. You're going to have to stay with me long enough to find out what those are. Number eight, eat a bedtime snack. Yes. Okay. You guys really, I am literally all about food. Like I love food. I love making food. I love creating recipes. I love feeding people and I love bedtime snacks. And your sleep is gonna love a bedtime snack too. We're gonna to talk about what that can look like. Number nine, banana peel tea. That's all I'm gonna say about that until we get there. Number 10, get tested for parasites. That's a weird one, but actually parasites and other critters in your body are very, very active at night. They actually wake with moon cycles. And so we're gonna talk about how things that ought not be living in your body can really give you a crappy night's sleep. Okay, so I'm so tired. You guys, I feel like I hear this from every single one of my clients. Like I work with women ages 12 to like 80, right? And every single one of them pretty much tells me that this is how they're feeling. You might feel the same way. Anybody? Hand raise. Especially raise. now. Especially now. Why do you say especially now, Hillary? I think like not being able because I get my energy from other people too like being around people brainstorming but it's just you know I still get that interaction but everything is virtual now and we are sitting for so long you know before my day was pretty much up you know go into the office you know and maybe I sit at my desk for a, you know three or four hours and then my other time is up you know running around doing events setting up for things um so this is a big change of pace for me. Totally. I totally understand that. Yes. I miss my office and my people <laughs> really hard. Um, and that, I mean, you know, not only the, the physical, like the lack of movement, but then also like you're right, the mental and emotional energy that's either being not expended in the same way or not expended at all, you know, really can lead to, um, you know, kind of that mental narrative that won't allow you to relax at night. So we're going to talk about what we can do there too. But really guys, the CDC has declared sleep, sleep issues, a public health epidemic. When we think about what we're dealing with right now, an epidemic, you know, and how much it shut everyone down and everything down, don't take it lightly when the CDC says that sleep issues are a public health epidemic too. They're affecting people in similar ways. Um, in a very large study, like millions and millions of people, you can see this, 23.2% um, of people, and that's 50 million of them, had problems concentrating during the day. Anybody? Anybody? Yep. Mm -hmm. And 11.3% or 24 million people, this is scary, said lack of sleep interfered with driving. You know, if 11.3% of us are driving around, you know, not have slept well the night before, this can lead to some serious issues. 8.6 or 8 million people said that the sleep deficiency they were experiencing did interfere with their job performance. 
Um, so that's, you know, that's us, right? We are young-ish professionals, <laughs> speaking of myself. Um, and, you know, we really need to be doing um, a really great job right now as we build our businesses, as we build our careers. And so you want to make sure that you're getting the best sleep of your life. Just so you guys know, um, I, I've like sourced everything on my slides. So if you're interested in reading any of these studies or you want any further corroboration or research, just let me know and I'm happy to share my slides with you. All right, so lack of sleep, as we just established, obviously can be dangerous for the ways that we've already talked about, but then also for other ways too, right? Inadequate sleep is a stressor on the body and it's implicated in all these things that none of us want, obesity, insulin resistance, meaning which is another you know reason why your body can put on weight, heart disease, the number one killer of both men and women, and then impaired cognitive function, not only for like right now and then tomorrow when you don't sleep well, but in the future when you're dealing with like neurodegeneration and Alzheimer's and you know other diseases of the brain. These things can add up because the body keeps the score. So don't you know cheat yourself because truly at the end of the day your body's like, oh hell no. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna make you pay attention to me, right? And this is how I'm gonna do it. And it starts reacting in a way that you might not like. So what if my diet is on point? Like most of us are trying to eat well, we're trying to eat clean, we're taking advantage of some of the amazing restaurants and services that our community has to offer. Um, but if you're not sleeping, it doesn't really matter if your diet's on point. This study shows, and this is the you know very long kind of lame name of the study, <laughs> insufficient sleep undermines dietary efforts to reduce adiposity. So essentially what that means is if you're not sleeping, you can get chubbier, okay? And none of us really want that, let's be honest, especially with the quarantine 15. So you can definitely work on, you know, getting your sleep under control to get your physical fitness under control, all right? This study was done with uh, a group of people who were sleeping 8.5 hours a night, which for most of us is like this luxury we can't even think of versus 5.5 hours a night, which is pretty much most of our daily sleep patterns, like, right? Most of us are sleeping between five and maybe six and a half hours a night. Not by choice, that's just because what, that's what our body's giving us at the time. So what the study found is that with the, the group of people who are only sleeping 5.5 hours a night, their hunger hormone, which is called ghrelin, increased dramatically. And I work a lot with hormones in my work and I have to tell, you know, all of my, all of my clients that ghrelin and leptin are your two hormones that influence hunger and fullness, right? So leptin is the hormone that is secreted by your body when you're full. So you know that, that you're full, you can't eat anymore. But ghrelin is that hormone. I always like to think of it as like a monster saying, grr, ghrelin, right? Ghrelin is that hormone your body secretes when it needs more food. And it might need more food because it's lacking energy. It might need more food because it's malnourished, or it might need more food because it's so, you know, depleted of sleep that it, it gets a signals crossed. It also showed that blood glucose tended to increase with less, <clears throat> excuse me, less sleep. So glucose is just the amount of sugars in your blood, right? And the more sugar you have in your blood consistently, not only are you going to struggle with, with, you know, weight gain and weight loss resistance, but you can also start being at risk for diseases like metabolic syndrome, diabetes, um, you know, even Alzheimer's disease, which is called diabetes type three. Now, like you don't want to have a lot of extra glucose in your blood and the less you sleep, the more blood glucose can increase. And again, I've got the source there too, in case anybody wants to check it out. All right, let me move us a little so I can get to, there we go. Okay, so let's get into our sleep tips. Like how do we kind of like, you know, not get freaked out by some of those statistics, right? <laughs> um, as we just talked about, you guys, as the amount of sleep that you have decreases, your blood sugar, again, is going to increase. And you can do this really easily at home. Your blood sugar fasted should be between 70 and 110 nanograms per deciliter. If it's less than that or more than that without any food in your system for the last like 30 minutes or so, um, then you've got elevated or, you know, decreased blood sugar. And that's going to be an issue in the future. I actually just test mine every once in a while for fun because I make my clients do it. And I just like to self-experiment to see like how do certain foods impact my blood sugar? If I'm going to like drink two glasses of wine on an empty stomach, my blood sugar is going to increase, right? And then I'm going to wonder why I'm not sleeping well. I'm going to wonder why I wake up puffy the next morning and why I can't zip my jeans, right? But if I'm eating like a, a pretty, you know, nourishing diet full of like really good quality animal fats and good quality fruits and vegetables and like, like real grains, right? 
then my body is going to feel nourished and balanced enough to have normal blood sugar. It's not asking for more and it's not shuttling it into my, you know, the back of my arms and my belly and my booty where I don't want it instead of into my liver and muscles where it's supposed to go. All right, so lack of sleep has been shown to increase blood sugar levels and the risk of diabetic issues. We established that. Here's a little bit more of, of a different study. When researchers restricted people with type 1 diabetes, that's insulin-dependent diabetes, so not many people, but it's, it's increasing. Like More and more people are getting type 1 diabetes to just four hours of sleep. So now we've dropped down from 5.5 to four hours of sleep their sensitivity to insulin was reduced by 20% compared to that after a full night of sleep. So insulin, you guys, is like the, the key that unlocks the cell to allow blood sugar to get into the cell where it gives us energy, all right? So you have to have a, a normal amount of blood sugar, like you need sugar in your blood because that's what actually gives your cells energy. So when you're insulin resistant, not only are you storing fat where you don't want it, but you're also going to feel exhausted all the time because you can't get that sugar into the cells where it's supposed to be used for energy, right? So that's four hours of sleep. Anybody struggle with four hour nights? <laughs> you know, we do sometimes, right? Here's, here's something interesting too. When your blood sugar is really high, and this again, out of range, it's over 110 nanograms per deciliter, your kidneys will try to get rid of it by removing it via urination. This is why you get out of bed and you pee like three to five times a night, right? So I can always tell my clients who are struggling with some insulin resistant issues because I ask them, you know, how, how well do you sleep throughout the night? What wakes you up? What keeps you up? If I have women getting up, you know, one, two, five times a night to go pee, I know that that's a blood sugar dysregulation issue and we have some work to do on diet. Okay, so according to some studies, sleeping on an empty stomach slows your body's ability to convert proteins into muscle. So this is why we want to have a snack before bed and we're gonna talk about what that looks like. Okay, shifting gears just a little bit. Sleep tip number two, get outside early. And now I told you guys, like I miss my office, but I also like my home office because I actually like have a window in my office. So for like four years of my life, I didn't know if it was day or night because I was just in my like inside office, right? So now my body has a little bit better circadian rhythm. And that just refers to like the sleep wake cycles of the hormones of your body. So check this out. Natural daylight, like being outside in Bakersfield, right, at high intensities as experienced outside buildings, has been shown to, number one, advance the timing of sleep to earlier hours. So that's what we want. We don't want to stay up until like 11, 12, 1 a.m., right, because you can't fall asleep because your body's too wired. So the earlier you get outside and get natural exposure to sunlight, the earlier your body's natural sleep hormone melatonin is going to start kicking in. It should start kicking in between like 7 and 8 p.m. And you'll kind of start to notice that when you pay attention. It's called a sleep wave because you can like ride it, right? <laughs> when you start yawning like around 8 o'clock and you start getting like those droopy eyelids and everything starts slowing down, you are on a sleep wave. So I tell my clients, don't neglect your waves. Like when you start feeling sleepy, now is not the time to like start binge watching Westworld, right? Like you have got to start doing something that's gonna help you get ready for bed. Now natural daylight also affects the duration of sleep and the, and the quality of sleep. So when you think about this, I always tell people like, try to live like your ancestors lived, try to eat like they lived, try to sleep like they lived, try to do the activities that they did because they did not deal with all of the chronic illnesses that we deal with today. So when you think about like your great, 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 great grandmother or grandfather, they were up like outside doing things at the butt crack of dawn, right? Not only good for their body, but also really good for their sleep wake cycles. So by getting outside early, you start to push down that melatonin, which is your sleepy hormone. And you also set your circadian clock for the day. Now people are like, well, can't I just have like a, a light inside or can't, can't I be exposed to like any light? Does it do the same thing? No, it doesn't. During the day, light intensities outside can reach illuminances up to 10, 100,000 lux, right, in direct sunlight and 25,000 lux in full daylight. So even with a little bit of, of shade, right? Light intensities in closed rooms are considerably lower and standard office lighting, and this makes you want to like throw up a little bit, right? It's only about 500 lux often lower. So, you know, when you think about all of us that struggle with anxiety and depression, 
uh, chronic illness, vitamin D deficiencies, which has been shown to be everything from cancer to autoimmune disease to ADD, all dependent on your vitamin D status. And we're all inside all day, like at our computers, you know, and I'm, I'm just as guilty as the rest of us. I'm literally doing that right now. I do it all day. But get, I make sure that I get outside early and I will swim or run or do yoga or even just like sit outside and read something, making sure that my pineal gland, which is like sitting behind right here, like behind your eyes, um, is, is being kind of awakened, right? Because that's going to help set my sleep weight cycles for the day. Okay. Sleep tip number three, just checking time. Take breaks at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. If you guys notice, if you like just take, you know, tomorrow, because it's already after 10, and you start thinking like, when do I kind of lose it? You know, mid-morning, mid-afternoon, it's probably going to be right about these times. Your body kind of goes through this natural depressive cycle, right? Like you're, you're riding your, your hormones, your cortisol's up and your cortisol's down. And it's normal. And so instead of trying to fight it, like we all do, why don't you just roll with it and do the things that your, again, your ancestors would do. If they were tired, they'd be like, I'm taking a nap. Like I'm laying down. I'm out of here. Right. Even other cultures have like, you know, nap times, you know, uh, Latin American countries have siesta time. Then they come back together for a meal. And how great is that? Like you have a nap, you have a full meal, you sleep like a baby the rest of the night, right? Cause your body has done all the things that are nourishing for it. So one of the biggest reasons many of us suffer from insomnia and difficulty getting a good night's sleep is our inability to relax and turn our brains off when we put our heads down for the night. So I have a couple things I wanna share with you. And Hillary, I think you and I were sort of alluding to this at the beginning of the presentation. Um, I have my clients do a brain dump every night before they go to bed. So it's taking a pen to paper, it's writing down every thought that you've naturally suppressed during the day because you're so busy that you don't give your mind time to solve problems. Like from a, a interpersonal perspective, you can solve crap at work all day long, but you're not taking the time to deal with that thought that came up about your mom, you know, or your childhood or that anxious, you know, thought you're having about something you did say or didn't say with a colleague or whatever it is, right? Like we all have that narrative running through our mind all day long. My advice is to literally drop it onto paper, preferably during an Epsom salt bath, so that you can remove and clear that mental space and allow yourself to sleep. And once it's on paper, you know that the next day you can go back and you can work on solving that problem if need be, or you can scratch it off or you can rip it up and throw it away, but it no longer takes up that mental space in your brain that's interfering with your sleep. And that tip all in and of itself has really saved the, the sleep night for many a client, right? Just getting it out of your head. Okay. I'm so, definitely going to have to try that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Let me know how it goes. It's a good habit to get into. Mm -hmm. And then too, Hillary, like, I mean, let's say you're just getting into that habit and you wake up at 3 a.m., you turn on your light journal for five minutes. Like you're gonna, your brain's gonna slow down, you're gonna clear it out, and you're guaranteed you're gonna be able to get back to sleep a little bit easier, okay? Number four, enjoy carbs at dinner. Yes, please, don't try to do like a low carb diet at dinner, you're gonna sleep like crap, I promise. <laughs> so about four hours before bedtime, you're going to need some food that boosts your serotonin and tryptophan. So tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin. It's also an amino acid found in meat. So let this be my one plug for the ancestral kind of animal centric diet where your body and your hormones do need some animal proteins, be they fish, be they, you know, chicken, meat, eggs, dairy, uh, all those foods contain, you know, natural tryptophan, which is going to help relax you and get you to sleep. Serotonin is your neurotransmitter that so many of us are deficient in. So many of us are on SSRIs because our brains don't produce or keep enough serotonin. Tryptophan being a direct precursor to serotonin can help you not only get a great night's sleep, but also feel better doing so. All right. This is how I like to, since I'm, you know, do nutrition for a job, like this is what I'll, I'll tell my clients about one bite of carbohydrate rich food. So like rice, quinoa, squash is a, a, approximately a, a tablespoon. And that's also approximately about 10 grams of carbohydrates, right? So aim for somewhere between like 40 and 50 grams to start with, but you can go up to as many as, as you want to, you know, that works for you well. If in doubt, add more carbohydrates, okay? Within reason, obviously. All right, sleep tip number five, do be careful with your vices. Mwahaha. All right, check it out, guys. We all want to like just relax at night, 
Um, like we are the Woodward house loves our wine. I get it, you know, and we all have things that, that we, you know, like kind of just enjoy, right? Be it caffeine, be it alcohol, be it cigarettes, whatever it is, but check out this study. So this larger, this larger study showed that um, researchers were measuring sleep using wristwatch like sensors and participants daily entries into sleep diaries. So objective and subjective data, which is a really good study. The data showed that people who used nicotine and alcohol within four hours of going to bed felt, felt the largest impact on their sleep cycle, even when controlling for age, gender, stress, and other factors. So the whole process of breaking these things down has a stimulant effect in and of itself. So that means, you know, the nights I'm drinking a Cabernet, I definitely fall asleep much faster, but ultimately I am exhausted because I'm up two or three times that night because it creates energy in the body trying to break down those toxins. So limiting alcohol consumption to one or two glasses of wine or beer with dinner three or four hours before bedtime will minimize any sleep disruption and something, and you guys already know that and you're like, great. Okay. Thanks a lot for that, you know, fantastic sleep tip, but you know, even nicotine and coffee will do the same thing. So just be a little bit careful. And if sleep is truly your priority, it might take a little bit of self-sacrifice and that's all I'm going to say there. Okay. Sleep tip number six, try digestive enzymes. You guys, I can't even tell you the epidemic that we have of low stomach acid and no, everyone's like, who, who the hell cares? <laughs> but I'll tell you, like so many women, so many men cannot digest their food, right? If you've ever been on Tums, if you've ever been on a proton pump inhibitor, you know, Nexium, Prilosec, um, the purple pill, right? If you've ever felt like you, you can't digest your food, you don't have sufficient stomach acid. And so taking things that further lower your stomach acid is one of the worst things you can do for your body and one of the least known you know, issues that's out there because digestion takes 80% of the available energy of your body. That's a lot of energy. Your body preferentially has to burn that food because it knows it needs that food for energy. So when you can't digest your food well, you start to get something known as leaky gut right? Or, or permeable membrane of your intestines. Um, and really what happens is I'll tell people like your, your intestinal wall is only one cell thick. So let's say here's a cell and here's a cell, right? If you eat foods that your body doesn't agree with or that it can't digest, these cells can start to open up. And all of a sudden these undigested food particles can start to get through into your bloodstream where they totally don't belong. Then your body starts mounting this immune response to them. You start getting food intolerances. That's one of the number one causes of anxiety and insomnia that I see from a biochemical perspective is eating foods that don't agree with your body. Also, undigested food can make getting to sleep and staying asleep really, really difficult. If anybody's ever had tummy issues at night, you know you're not getting a good night's sleep, right? So you can start with a few things. Number one, I always recommend if you have any issues like this, just try going gluten and dairy free for a month and see what happens. Like do your best to do like 100% gluten and dairy free and see if your sleep improves a little bit. If it doesn't, or if your digestion doesn't improve, you can take a supplement called Digest Zymes, and it's right there, Digest Zymes. Um, that one I think you might have to get through a health professional, um, but there are lots of other digestive enzymes. That's just my favorite and the one I use in my practice. But if you go like to cones or sprouts or, you know, Lassins, you'll be able to find a good quality digestive enzyme. Just ask somebody who works in the supplement department and that'll help you digest your food better and cut down on some of those food intolerances. Okay, so here's our sleep tips that we're borrowing from um, the baby whisperer, <laughs> okay, of all things. And I always tell my clients, I'm like, look, you guys, when you become an adult, nobody takes care of you. And, you know, most of them look back at me and they're like, oh, crap. That's true, right? Like it's really hard being an adult. Uh, nobody like takes care of you when you're sick or when you're overwhelmed or when you're tired and can't sleep. And so I tell clients like treat yourself the way you treat a baby or a puppy because most of us have had at least one of, of those, right? Um, and if you haven't, just imagine this is based off Dr. Harvey Karp's Five S's, a book that did change my life when I had my little babies. Um, and he essentially uses these principles, only three pertain to us, of, of you know, really making a soothing environment for your baby so that your baby's kind of like lulled off to sleep, right? Because it should be an enjoyable time. It's like a resting and restorative time for the body. So the first thing he says is to swaddle yourself. Obviously, nobody wants to be swaddled. It's like freaky to be that constrained. But a lot of people find that sleeping with 
a weighted blanket is really helpful and kind of mimics that just feeling of safety that we want when we're asleep. Um, if you don't have a, a weighted blanket, you can use a heavy blanket just on your feet. That's an acupuncture pressure point um, that can really help, again, just increase the feelings of, of safety and security. And that's what we're trying to get the body to understand that it's safe enough to go to sleep. Okay, so swaddle is tip number one. Tip number two is sleeping on your side or your stomach. When you sleep on your back, and this, Eric, this is, you know, for you, with sleep apnea and a, an airway that's being slightly obstructed, you don't actually have to suffer from sleep apnea to have an obstructed airway. And so it's going to increase your wake episodes when you're sleeping on your back. Um, when you're sleeping on your side or stomach, you breathe better. Your digestion is actually a little bit better. And again, if we're looking at it from more of like a metaphysical perspective, your body feels safer. Like it's, it's the instinctively a safe and protected pose, right? And so try sleeping on your side or stomach using a special pillow if you need it, if you normally sleep on your back. Okay, and then the last S that pertains to us is a shush, which we're gonna substitute white noise. So um, something that I learned very early on having so many children is that if there is not some like sleepy noise going on, every little thing wakes everybody up. So for us living in suburbia, it's dogs, it's cars, it's sirens, it's next door neighbors, it's parties, it's a snoring spouse, whatever it is, right? You, you will get a better night's sleep if you get a white noise machine. I just turn on my bathroom fan everywhere I'm at. Uh, my phone has an app called Relax Melodies that I can use uh, the oscillating fan or like the river, you know, to make sure that I have this, that something else for my brain to focus on. And that's what's happening with white noise is your brain is not focusing on the internal narrative and it's not focusing on all those little sounds, the outside. Again, it's this like primal sort of instinct. We want to be safe. We want to be secure. So of course we're going to wake up at every little, every little sound. And so you can trick your brain into feeling a little bit safer and secure with white noise. All right. So we're to tip number seven. Anybody have any questions or comments at this time? Well, okay, we'll keep going. Sleep tip number eight, eat a bedtime snack. I tricked you with that cake, people. Don't eat cake for your bedtime snack, okay? <laughs> that was just that was just a little icon I had. But what you really want is balancing carbohydrates, fat, and protein. If, if that's a new concept to you, um, come see me, please. <laughs> it shouldn't be a new concept to you, but if it is, you know, carbohydrates are like, you know, rice, pasta, things, fruit, fat is going to be, you know, butter, heavy meats, and protein is mostly going to be animal products, right? I had my, one of my kids, um, who's 10, by the way, asked me the other day, mom, it's a banana protein. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I failed. I have failed. <laughs> no, honey, a banana is not protein. I love you. Okay. So remember you guys, imbalanced blood sugar will wake you up. And I think I talked about this in the last webinar we had too. When your blood sugar is unstable, meaning you eat too many simple carbohydrates, simple sugar throughout the day, and it spikes during the day, it has to plummet at some point. There will always be balance in the body. And so when you eat, you know, an imbalanced meal, maybe fast food, maybe too many, like I said, simple carbohydrates, you don't want to eat a plate full of pasta with just like vegetarian sauce. That's too many carbohydrates without the balancing grounding effects of protein and fat, right? And so your blood sugar will then plummet right around, you know, 12, 1, 2 a.m. And all of a sudden cortisol, which is your stress hormone and also referred to as nature's alarm clock is going to come online and tell your body, get up and go get something to eat. Like we have to balance out this low blood sugar. You need energy. And so that's the top reason I see my women waking up at 12, 1, 2, 3 um, a.m. is that they've had imbalanced blood sugar. And so I always tell them like, just let's try this for a few weeks. Eat a snack right at bedtime. 20 minutes before bedtime, enjoy a banana and some peanut butter, sunflower butter, almond butter, um, some almond milk with apple slices. Here we're, we're balancing our protein and our carbohydrates, some cheese and macadamia nuts. Like those are good snacks, right? Um, eat something that's heavy in fat and protein and also have a little bit of carbohydrates. And I tell women like, you know, a, a snack is about the size of your hand, right? A meal should be the size of two cupped hands. This is about what your stomach can fit, okay? So a snack should fit into a cupped palm. Um, and that's about what you should have before bed. And that will help you sleep through the night. So I want you guys, like, if you had to pick one sleep tip, start with this one. Start with number eight tonight and see if it helps, okay? And about, Jennifer, how, um, 
far in advance, like, would you have the snack? Yeah, like before you go to bed. 15 and 20 minutes before bed. Oh, okay. Like right before bed, then brush your teeth, obviously. And if you're really struggling with like, you know, uh, recurring sleep issues, I'll tell people leave a snack by your bedside table, like leave some almonds and half a banana by your bedside table. If you wake up, the first thing you should do would be to eat your snack, have a little bit of water and go right back to sleep. And your body, I almost guarantee you will go right back to sleep. Cause really what it's looking for is just um, a way to balance out that imbalanced blood sugar. Okay. I threw this one in here because it's something I've been experimenting with some of my group coaching programs and uh, women seem to like it. Banana peel tea sounds super weird, but um, you know, it's really not as weird as it sounds. I think it tastes really good. Banana peels themselves actually tend to have a lot of tryptophan in it, which remember is that uh, precursor to serotonin and also a sleep making hormone. It has a lot of magnesium. Magnesium is a very relaxing mineral, relaxing mineral. And actually magnesium at 400 to 800 milligrams before bed can be really helpful for a sleep aid as well. Um, a little bit of honey in your banana, banana peel tea also gives you that good carbohydrate and honey is actually relaxing too. So just like a teaspoon of honey in your banana peel tea, if you sip on that, this about an hour before bed is going to be really helpful to help you go to sleep. And again, I know it's weird, but I wanted to give you something interesting uh, in this talk as well. So I'm going to provide this copy to Francis and Hillary. And if anybody decides they want to try banana peel tea, you totally can. I don't think I have to tell you that you should probably get an organic banana and wash your banana before you put it into tea. Okay. All right. And then sleep tip number 10. Now I put this in there because this is what I do. You guys, I'm a functional practitioner. I look at root dysfunction of the body. Like when everything else has failed in traditional medicine, where can we go a little bit deeper to find those imbalances that are causing some of these issues like chronic illness, like autoimmune disease, like gut issues and like insomnia. So getting tested for parasites has actually been really helpful for my own self and then for many of my clients because 70% of parasites are microscopic. And as we already established, most of us have low stomach acid. Again, if you've ever felt like you can't digest a meal, your stomach acid levels are probably off. I could talk on stomach acid for five days, but I will not bore you with it. Suffice it to say, you probably need to increase yours, all right? So parasites and other critters that shouldn't be in your body, your, your um, digestive tract are really active with the moon cycles. I know that's kind of woo, but it's true. <laughs> a lot of things are actually active with the moon cycles um, and parasites are one of them. Um, I put this in there. <laughs> I have seen some weird stuff when we go through some parasite clearing protocols with people and they send me pictures and I'm like, on one hand, I love you. And on the other hand, please don't do that again, but also do. <laughs> All right. So even when, you, you know, even if you don't feel like you've got, you know, necessarily tummy issues, if you're having these, this persistent insomnia where you're feeling kind of wired and anxious or itchy at all, actually night after night, I would recommend some parasite testing. And if you want to kind of take care of it on your own, there are a few things you can do here. You can use black walnut oil, oil of oregano, and a few other things like olive leaf extract to um, get rid of those nasty things. All right. You don't want them in your body. Um, so I think that is sleep tip number 10. And I wanted to share with you guys some action steps because everyone always asks, well, what can I take to help me sleep? And I want to help you with that. I will tell you again, as like a functional practitioner, I don't believe in like a supplement for every ill, right? Or a pill for every ill. I do believe in correcting and restoring root metabolic dysfunction so that your body can do what it's always supposed to have been doing, right? Which is, you know, thriving. Um, so some bonus supplements for not sleeping well, when you really can't fix it on your own is prolonged release melatonin at three milligrams. And you want the prolonged release because most people can fall asleep okay, but they wake up like we were talking about early in the morning. The prolonged release is going to stay in your system longer and keep you asleep through that 12 to 3 a.m. issue. Okay. Hillary, do you have a question? Okay. All right. Then phosphatidylserine is actually a... Um, uh, it's like a good fat and it coats all of your, um, like your, your neurons basically, and kind of brings down some of the stress hormone in your body, cortisol or adrenaline or noradrenaline and starts to relax you enough so that you can get to sleep. So when I test for like cortisol dysfunction or elevated cortisol at night in my practice, if cortisol is elevated right at night, which is the opposite of what it should be, I'll, I'll use phosphatidylserine to lower that nighttime cortisol so that your body can relax enough to go to sleep. 
GABA is one of my all time favorite supplements for dealing with anxiety um, and, you know, panic attacks and actually like coming off of substances um, and then also uh, sleep issues. GABA is a precursor also to serotonin. And it's a very, um, it's just a very relaxing um, substance, basically. It's natural, it's an amino acid, and so you can find it in meat as well. Um, and it's really hard for you to take too much GABA. GABA does cross the blood-brain barrier when it's in a sublingual form. So make sure you get a sublingual form of GABA, otherwise it won't do much for the body. And that one can be found in a brand called Source Naturals Calm, okay? The last one, man, I love this one. This pill is like $7. You can find it at um, like drugstores, right? Like Rite Aid. It's a homeopathic preparation uh, by Highlands called Calms Forte. And so I will always pack this with me in my travel bag. I have it by my bedside table. I give it to my kids if they need it or my husband. It's a very gentle, gentle diluted herbal formula that can help you get to sleep really fast. I gave it to my husband one time when we were traveling. He was complaining that he couldn't sleep. And literally in the middle of him complaining that he couldn't sleep, he fell asleep <laughs> while well, he had one of these under his tongue. So um, again, it's just like passion flower, valerian, oats, hops, like some really good calming substances diluted to like the nth degree because it's a homeopathic preparation used in conjunction together. It's very calming specifically for sleep. Um, next steps, um, you can find more about sleep, you can find more about me, you can find more meal plans, you can find anything you want to know about functional nutrition at jenniferwoodwardnutrition.com. Um, you know, if you want to know more about testing, any of that, just let me know. There is a prof professional picture of me, which is why I put it on there. It's like, oh good, that's not one that like my kid took. So I always give free discovery calls if anybody, you know, wants to work any further. But for now, I just wanted to say thank you to the wonderful BYP group. Thanks for having me on. I hope these tips help you guys sleep better tonight. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, does anyone have any questions or want to talk through, like if you have um, trouble sleeping, um, questions for Jennifer, now's the time. Don't Please be shy. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Gloria. Okay, so on the snack before bedtime, I've gotten in the very bad habit of eating ice cream at like 10 o'clock at night. So you saying the blood sugar <laughs> balance, it's like, oh my gosh, that hit completely. I was taking notes here on the side. I was like, that's me, that's what's going on. And I didn't even realize what was happening. <laughs> so just this week, I'm trying to get off of eating ice cream every night at 10 o'clock when I sit down. But I've started doing oatmeal. Is that too many carbs? I do a half a cup of oatmeal and then I'm just putting cinnamon in it and almond milk. Well, I feel like I need something sweet. <laughs> no, that's it. That's, I mean, you've moved over to a butter snack, but there's two things there. The ice cream, if it's like real ice cream, it's going to have a little bit more fat. So it's going to stay with you longer. If, have you felt like the oatmeal helps you sleep any better? Or are you still waking up? Um, I think it's helping me sleep better. And I was doing dairy free ice creams. So I'm actually dairy free and gluten free. Yeah. Um, so it's dairy free, mostly almond milk or coconut milk, oat milk type ice cream. Right. But the oatmeal does keep me fuller because I actually wake up hungry. I'll wake up like at two or three o'clock in the morning with my stomach growling, like loudly, <laughs> like it wakes me up. I'm hungry. So I'm actually sleeping because I feel like I'm not hungry. <laughs> so here, if you like the oatmeal, this is what I do. Um, maybe like cut your oatmeal portion in half and add a good one to two tablespoons of like almond butter or sunflower butter and like half a banana, half a cup of blueberries, like a little bit of more fiber, like fruit fiber, pectin to slow down the absorption and then plenty of fat. If you can do butter, I would add butter or coconut oil. Um, but if you'd rather have like the, um, you know, nut butter, that would be a really good choice to add to it. And I think that if you um, add that fat and protein, it'll slow down the absorption and therefore slow down your blood sugar spike. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. I'll try that. Good luck. <laughs> Let me know. I will. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anybody Jennifer, else? when you mentioned about the melatonin, um, like how much should we take? Like yeah. what's a good dosage? That's a really good question. Honestly, melatonin is amazing. It's one of your body's master antioxidants. So I don't ever hesitate in giving it to people, um, but you do want to be careful with the dosages. It has been studied clinically up to 200 milligrams actually for a reduction of like breast cancer and ovarian cancer. But at that dose, if you just took it at one time, it might like actually kill you. So I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying it has really powerful effects on the body. Most people start at one milligram. Okay. So hear me one milligram. Yes. Uh, the extended release that I like has 
three milligrams of prolonged release melatonin. So for most people, children included, one milligram to three milligrams is generally effective for sleep, okay? But start with everything else before you mess around with your hormones. Melatonin is a hormone, and too much of it will make you feel very, very sleepy the next day. Okay. okay? And then I, before we um, started this, we were talking about uh, CBD, and we have Gloria, who is joining us now. Um, did you want to, Jennifer, talk about CBD um, and, you know, what you enjoy about it yeah, sure. <laughs> for sleeping? Yeah, absolutely. Well, what I love about CBD, right, is, is CBD, you guys, works on your endocannabinoid system. So everyone has one. You've, you've all got this system. And really, the function of the endocannabinoid system is to make you feel, um, like, put you into parasympathetic nervous system. So make you feel relaxed. And everyone, you know, kind of has the right to feel that way. But when we've switched over to sympathetic nervous system dominant so much in today's culture, we're just always on. So we always have like this background noise where we're thinking like we either need to fight or flee. It's called the fight or flight, uh, you know, response. And, and, you know, the result of that is that your endocannabinoid system does not, does not have all of the raw materials it needs for your body to feel kind of just relaxed or normal. And so all CBD oil does is it hits those endocannabinoid receptors with the correct molecule to make you feel like normal, right? So, so all of a sudden you can start sleeping normally. You come down from your heightened feelings of anxiety that's due to you know, hormonal dysfunction. Um, and so what it, it, I really look at it as like a regulator. And if you don't need it, it doesn't work for you, right? But if you do need it, it works very, very well for you. And so I used it from everyone, you know, who, like I had an 11 year old girl use it to like, you know, a 65 year old man for different things, anxiety, pain, sleep, um, and, a, and a few other things that it's really, really helpful for. Gloria, you could probably speak way more to it than I can, but I'm a big fan of it, um, you know, for targeted therapy, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, t I totally agree. And you're absolutely correct. Everything you touched on it. I mean, it's perfect. It just helps bring your body into balance and it's natural to our bodies. Our bodies naturally produce cannabinoids. We generally don't produce enough. So we're deficient. So when we supplement, it does help to bring that balance, but it does work with those receptors and basically your peripheral organ, central nervous system, immune system, just your entire endocannabinoid system that controls those things. But yeah, and those are the top things we see in store, our sleep issues, anxiety issues, stress, especially now with everything going on, but definitely 100% what you touched on. <laughs> totally, cool, good. And thanks for sponsoring this event too, Gloria. Yeah, of course. I was excited when I got, when I got um, notice about it. Always, always willing to participate. <laughs> Do you want to share for those um, who may not know what you are giving away for the luck for one lucky winner today? Yes. So any participant that has joined in on the webinar is entered into the giveaway for a CBD bath bomb, which our bath bombs are 100 milligrams of CBD, and they are infused with essential oil. So they're all natural. They're Epsom salt, CBD, and either lavender, eucalyptus, peppermint oil, um, orange and ling ling and lemon are the ones we have. So just depending on what type of relief you're looking for. And then also a $15 gift certificate off any purchase of $50 or more to our store. Awesome, thanks Gloria. Yes, thank you. We appreciate that. And so we'll be drawing uh, the winner after this and then announcing it on our social media. Uh, but thank you all uh, for joining today. And thank you again to Strata Credit Union, CBCC, and Carnies for sponsoring our BYP Summit Series. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I am going like, okay, make, I made my little notes. So I'm gonna try the bedtime snack and the tea. I think that may help me. Okay, I, I hope it does. Do let me know, Hillary. I'm happy to help if you need further help. And thanks for having me back, you guys. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you for Thank being you. here. And I see you, Amanda Frank. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Francis? Yes. Did you want to close it out? Sure thing. Thanks, Hillary. Um, thank you so much, Jennifer. I absolutely loved everything that you were talking about today. I, felt it, I found it very helpful um, for me personally. Um, 
So for next week, we are going to have another webinar on Monday, September 28th at 10.30 a.m. We will be joined by Lyle Martin. He is the Chief Investigator for the Kern County District Attorney's Office, and he is going to be talking about um, how to lead during a crisis. So he has a ton of leadership experience. Um, he's very popular for uh, leadership conferences and webinars, so he'll be a, a great one to tune into. Um, that will be next Monday, September 28th from 1030 to 1130 in the morning. And I believe Hillary just sent out the link to register in the chat. So go ahead and use that link. And we hope to see you again next Monday. So thank you all so much for joining us and have a great week. Thank you. Bye, Jennifer. Yeah.